Hello everyone, I am Dr. Gaurav Ganeshwala. I am a consultant cardiologist working at Pune. I am practicing at Central Pune Doctor House which is located at Bun Garden Road next to Inox Theatre. I am also available at various hospitals of Pune like Ruby Hall Clinic Sasun Road, Ruby Hall Clinic Vanovri, Inamdar Hospital, Fatima Nagar and Sayadri Hospital Hadapsar. Today we are going to discuss about the problem of heart attack in younger individuals. Why it has increased in the last few years, how to diagnose a case of myocardial infarction or heart attack, what actions needs to be taken in case of a heart attack, what is the correct treatment and how can we prevent heart attacks in future. So it is very important to discuss about the problem of heart attack. And before we discuss about heart attack, it is very important to know about the structure of heart. Heart is made up of muscles and these are special kind of muscles which keeps beating, contracting and relaxing 24-7. It does not get even a single second of rest. They are working day and night without any kind of rest. And our heart is beating at almost 72 times in a minute. So, for this tremendous activity or tremendous work, it requires good amount of energy and this energy is supplied through blood supply which is flowing through the arteries which are running on the surface of the heart. So, these arteries are nothing but simple tubes which are providing blood supply to the muscles of the heart. Now, in some individuals, there is a development of deposition of cholesterol in the inner sur surface of the arteries. So, this is called a plaque or atherosclerotic plaque and whenever this plaque gets sizable in, 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 in amount, it causes reduction in the blood supply to the muscles of the heart. So, in such cases when the blood supply is not adequate, patient gets symptoms of chest pain or breathing difficulty. Sometimes this pain is also associated with excessive sweating or giddiness. So, all these symptoms are because of the reduction in the blood supply to the muscles of the heart. Now, in some unfortunate individuals, on an unfortunate day, this plaque gets ruptured and the lipid material, it comes out into the circulation and it attracts the blood cells and these blood cells actually gets mounted on the ruptured plaque and this leads to complete closure or near complete occlusion of the artery. And in this cases, the blood supply to the muscles is severely reduced. So, the blood supply is reduced, there is no nutrition to the muscles and that is why the muscles are crying and the crying of muscles is nothing but the chest pain of heart attack. So, in case of heart attack, there is a complete disruption of the blood supply to the muscles of the heart and that is why that portion of the heart is getting damaged and that is why patient gets chest pain. Now, it is very important to know what is the pain which is generated from heart because there are many other possibilities if a person is getting pain in the chest. Apart from heart attack or heart related chest pain, there are other possibilities like gastritis. Gastritis in simple word we know as acidity problem. Apart from acidity and heart related pain, many individuals also develop muscle related pain or bone related pain which we call musculoskeletal pain. So, how to differentiate heart related pain or angina from other etiologies like musculoskeletal pain or gastritis. So, remember the pain related to heart attack is very severe, it is once in lifetime experience and this pain is severe crushing type of pain or many patient mention it as a severe tightness of the chest which is radiating from center of the chest or left side of the chest to the left arm. In some cases it may also be radiated to the right arm. In some cases patient may get back pain or neck pain or jaw pain and this pain is associated with excessive sweating, profuse sweating. In some cases, patient also has breathing difficulty and some cases patient may develop abnormal heart rhythm which can give complaints of palpitations or gabrahat. And this 
can sometimes lead to fall in the blood pressure and because of that the circulation to brain is also reduced and patient may get symptoms of giddiness or chakkarana what we classically come to know from our patients of heart attack. So remember when you have a severe chest pain in the center of the chest or on the left side radiating to the arms, back, neck or jaw, it is associated with sweating, associated with breathing difficulty or giddiness. These are very classical symptoms of a heart attack and in this case you need to go to a nearby clinic or hospital and take an ECG. In 90% of the cases ECG can diagnose a heart attack. So if you have this kind of com complaints, do not waste time at home rather than taking home remedies, it is better to go to a nearby clinic or hospital, just take one ECG. This ECG can identify a heart attack and if there is a heart attack, it is important to go to a bigger hospital where cardiology facility is available or cath lab facility is available because this kind of patients with heart attack they require hospitalization and further advanced treatment to prevent the further damage to the heart. Now coming on to the other possibilities of chest pain like gastritis or dyspepsia or acidity. So this pain is more commonly after a intake of oily or spicy diet. Many patients get that if they have not consumed any food for a long time that means during fasting the pain is more common. In some cases immediately after a heavy meal it is common and remember it does not give you symptoms of breathing difficulty or sweating. It is usually a burning kind of pain in the center of the chest. It may be associated with vomiting or loose motions in some cases if the gastritis is also associated with diarrhea or gastroenteritis or food poisoning. Now the third possibility is musculoskeletal pain. The musculoskeletal pain is more superficial in origin. So many a times when you press on the chest wall, you may get some pain on pressing the chest wall. So that is the pain related to muscles. In some cases when you are turning on one side or you are lifting something, you may get pain. So that is also related to muscles or bones. So pain on movement is more commonly with musculoskeletal origin of pain. So this is how you differentiate the different possibilities in a patient with chest pain. Now coming on to the heart attack, why this heart attack problem has increased especially in the younger individuals in the last decade. Previously if we see the classical teaching, the heart attacks were more common in elderly individuals more than 60 years of age. And even in females, it was more common in the postmenopausal females. However, in the last few years, we are noticing that even younger individuals in their 30s and 40s are getting major heart attacks and some of them are even losing their lives. Now it is very important to identify this heart attack and to prevent the further damage and save a patient's life. So that is why if you have a severe chest pain as I already described, you must go to a nearby hospital, take an ECG, confirm that it is not a heart attack and in case if it is a heart attack, go to a major hospital where cardiology facility is available and a heart specialist is available. So when there is a heart attack and it is a major heart attack, in our language we call it ST elevation myocardial infarction, in this cases immediate action is necessary. So there are two options, one option is giving blood thinning agents, so these are called thrombolytic agents. So these are blood thinning agents which actually dissolve the blood clots which are formed on the ruptured plaque and it, it revascularize, revascularizes the artery. So the blood flow is again initiated and the damage to the muscles of the heart is limited. Now, Whenever there is an availability of a cath lab, cath lab is a place, it is like an operation theatre where angiography and angioplasties are done. So if you are in a hospital where cardiology facility is available, cath lab facility is available, in that case it is better to go ahead with an emergency angiography and identify the blockage. If there is a critical blockage, in such cases 
even emergency angioplasty can be done and emergency angioplasty it reassures that the blood flow is initiated within few minutes or in an hour or so and once the blood flow is established the damage to the muscles of the heart is limited and the pain related to heart attack it disappears ecg also becomes normal blood pressure improves pulse improves overall condition of patient improves and it is noted that the emergency angiography and angioplasty we call it primary angioplasty that is the gold standard treatment of a case of major heart attack because it saves more number of lives compared to any other treatment available for a major heart attack so that is why in a case of major heart attack it is better to undergo emergency angiography and angioplasty to avoid the damage to the muscles of the heart and it can actually save many lives now once angioplasty is done the next important thing is to take the medications regularly so in initial few days one or two days patient will be in icu or ccu after that patient is being shifted to the ward in ward patient is mobilized that means gradual activity is started and we make sure that patient is not having any significant discomfort now once the patient is stable enough to be discharged there is a training to the patient about the cardiac rehabilitation now this cardiac rehabilitation again is very important because many of these individuals who are in their 30s and 40s they are really depressed after an episode of heart attack so giving the proper training about the exercise diet in some cases when patient is obese it is important to uh, give them advice about weight reduction some of them also have a psychological effect after uh, myocardial infarction or heart attack so they also require some psychosocial uh, guidance with a psychiatrist or psychologist so this is all part of cardiac rehabilitation now what should we do to prevent further heart attack in future so it is very important apart from medicines medicines of course we need to take regularly patient will be on blood thinning medications cholesterol related medications if patient has some other risk factors like diabetes or blood pressure they will be on some medications for diabetes or blood pressures so medications are important should never stop medications after a heart attack or after angioplasty without advice of your cardiologist and apart from medications it is very important to know about the lifestyle modification and exercise protocols so in lifestyle we have different components like controlling the sugar controlling the blood pressure controlling the cholesterol levels being more active avoid psychosocial stress these are all very important components in the lifestyle modifications so in diet overall we should have less of saturated fats should avoid or reduce the amount of oil ghee butter cheese dairy products which are rich in fat ice cream sweets chaats farsan deep fried products bakery products all these things should be in limited amount and especially the processed food or refined sugars should be avoided because they are very harmful that can increase the bad cholesterol the ldl cholesterol or triglyceride levels now what should we eat so fresh fruits vegetables especially green vegetables whole grains nuts salads this should be consumed in good quantity because vegetables and fruits they are very rich source of vitamins minerals and they are very rich in fibers so it actually reduces the body weight and it also controls the levels of bad cholesterol and improves the level of good cholesterol the dal they are very rich in protein so that should be encouraged drink lot of water hydration is also very important so as per your dietitian or cardiologist advise you must drink lot of water because hydration is also very important in this post myocardial infarction or post heart attack period now many patients 
ask us about the type of oil which type of oil is better for a patient with heart attack so remember the olive oil is usually considered as a best oil for patients who have suffered from heart attack however it is very costly and it may not be uh, possible for everyone to buy or purchase uh, olive oil so in such cases we may even go for the other oils like sunflower oil rice bran oil safflower oil but remember the quantity of oil should be less now apart from diet the alcohol intake also should be in limits and especially post heart attack for initial 3 months it is advisable to avoid alcohol the excess alcohol intake can damage the inner surface of the arteries and this can lead to formation of cholesterol plaques in the arteries and that can actually increase the risk of future heart attack smoking also should be discouraged tobacco chewing is also not a good practice the nicotine in smoke in in cigarettes and tobacco can also damage the inner layer of the blood vessels and that can actually lead to future heart attack so that is why smoking alcohol and tobacco should be uh, discontinued immediately post myocardial infarction or heart attack exercise is also very important component being physically active not only reduces body weight but it also controls the levels of bad cholesterol it helps in controlling diabetes helps in controlling blood pressure so it can actually help in many risk factors of heart attack and it is like a training for the heart which has developed a heart attack so a heart which is more active after a heart after a heart attack that recovers faster compared to somebody who is physically inactive so that is why physical exercise should be encouraged however depending on the function of the heart it is your cardiologist or the physiotherapist who will decide what level of activity to be started in the initial period and once the heart attack is 2 or 3 months old after that a person comes back to his normal physical status now what kind of exercise is usually prescribed in the immediate post heart attack period walking is the best exercise in immediate heart post heart attack period so it not only improves the blood circulation in the overall body but it also makes the muscles stronger the heart muscles as well as the other muscles of the body become stronger with regular walking so it is usually recommended that the patient should be started on gradual walking from the 2 weeks after a myocardial infarction or a heart attack initially patient can have a walking of 10 minutes daily for one week in the next week he can increase to 15 minutes daily slowly we can increase to 20 minutes daily in such a manner we can go up to 30 minutes every day by the end of one month after heart attack and by the end of two months if patient is able to walk 30 minutes daily we can slowly increase the level of exercise apart from diet exercise reducing the stress is also very important especially a person who has suffered a heart attack he is under constant stress and the family support friends friends can also help in reducing this psychosocial stress and if patients who are not able to tolerate this stress or not able to tackle this stress they can even consult a psychologist to discuss about the problem apart from this sleep is also very important 6 to 8 hours of thorough sleep every day should be encouraged in a patient who has suffered a heart attack so remember prevention is better than cure and if we take regular medications diet lifestyle modifications exercise if we stop smoking alcohol tobacco we keep our blood sugars under control cholesterol under control blood pressure is monitored regularly and the blood pressure readings are under control in that case the chances of having a future heart attack is very less with that i will conclude my today's session if you have any questions you can directly contact us on the below phone number below given phone number or email address thank you